Action. Hi, Doc Robin here. It's solstice week, 2022 in December. Can you believe it? Welcome. We are live in the actualization zone. So if you're here with me, please say hello. I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching the replay, let me know that so I can come back in here and say hi to you too. I am looking forward to this forecast this morning. For those of you who are new, I'm Dr. Robin McKay the founder of the Actualization Zone. I am a spiritual advisor to executives, CEOs, leaders, spiritual entrepreneurs, and many of whom think they have ADHD or have been diagnosed with that, like me. And um, in addition to having a PhD in psychology, I also am a teacher of the Akashic Records in the Soul Journeys Method. And one of the gifts that I give my community every week is to channel from the Akashic Records, the energies, the wisdom, the insights from the Akashic Records that can support us during this week, every single week. And that's why I'm here. And I'm glad you are too. Um, okay, so first of all, I have a couple of announcements. And one is that if you are in the Scottsdale, Phoenix area, I am leading a walk at the labyrinth on Wednesday, the solstice, Wednesday afternoon at the um, Franciscan Renewal Center, which is on Lincoln in Scottsdale. And so if you are in Scottsdale or the Phoenix area and you'd like to be involved with that, just direct message me and I will send you over that information. It's a no charge event. I just love to go and gather with like-minded people at the labyrinth and to do the the uh, walk on the winter solstice. It's one of my favorite days. And then let's see what else. I'm still offering, still have a couple of those Wealth Consciousness RX, many coaching packages left. So loving doing these sessions. These are downloads from the Akashic Records that are expanding your capacity to attract, receive, and hold more wealth in your physical body, in your bank accounts, in your businesses. Those have been just magical to be able to deliver to so many of you. And so if you haven't gotten in on one of those yet, you'll need to do that this week. Those are available through the end of the week. Uh, three 45 minute sessions with me, private, which is very cool. And um, we do those over Zoom, 997 is the, the uh, investment on that. Usually a package like that runs about $4,500. So I'm happy to do those with all of you this week. And then I'm also offering Life Between Life reviews. And I'm gonna share more of that later on. So stay tuned later on in another live that I will be doing. So stay tuned for that. But if that is something that kind of perks your interest, you wanna pay attention because that stuff is really special to be able to do a Life Between Life reviews and then come back into your present and make some decisions about how you wanna live the rest of your life. Really, really precious. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the Akashic Records. What I do is I open up the records for the collective. I call in my guides to support me and I've already done that. And then I just basically share what the guides are telling me. That's how it works. All right, so this is a week solstice week here in the northern hemisphere it's winter solstice so it is the shortest day the longest night and of course in the southern hemisphere the opposite is true it's the longest day shortest night but since i'm in the northern hemisphere i really like to stay as close as i can to my energies to be able to share this with you in the most accurate and um, pristine way possible so we're going to be talking about the the winter solstice here in the northern hemisphere I always love this day. It's one of my favorite days. And I was reflecting yesterday as I was preparing for this session today that this was years ago. This was probably, I was still in graduate school, maybe 20, uh, 2005, maybe 2006. I had ended a relationship with a, a graduate student colleague friend that I had been involved with for a while. And I was living in my house in Kansas by myself with my two cats. And I remember sitting in front of the bar fireplace on the longest night on the winter solstice and just feeling like I was at a turning point in my life and really deliberately and mindfully connecting in with the energies of the winter solstice as a way to support the life that I really wanted to create for myself now that I was free of a relationship that 
it was a fine relationship. It was just not the relationship for me. We'll just put it that way. So I want us to keep thinking about the winter solstice as a time of reflection. I also learned recently, by the way, I'm not an astrologer. I'm not even really very good at interpreting astrology other than just, you know, my love of learning is what really drives me. And I was looking at this the other day at a couple of respected astrologers who I do know and do pay attention to. And they've both said that we can think about the winter solstice as a zero point. And what I realized for me, because I, I learned I learned just yesterday that the winter solstice is also the beginning of Capricorn season. My birthday is at the beginning of January. So this is the season that I was born into. And it really made sense for me and why for me, especially it would feel like it was zero point, a point of being poised for something new, a point of reflection, a point of decision for what's to come, reflecting back on what was and what has been, and then making decision about what is to come for me, for my, for my business, for my life, for my relationships. And so the invitation is for you to do the same, is to use this week as a point of reflection, as sort of this zero point moment where you can just stand poised and you can have a 360 degree perspective of your life, of where you've been, and of the myriad of choices that you have to take that are in front of you as well. And when we do that, we're offered the opportunity to stand in the truth of who we are as divine and eternal beings of love, light, and truth, and to choose the highest timeline, to choose our ascension timeline, to choose what I call the, the self-actualization timeline. There are a myriad of other timelines to choose at zero point, of course, because when you have a 360 degree view, you could choose a timeline from the past if you wanted to keep replaying what you've done in the past over and over again. But what the guides have really shown me is that this is a time where you get to elevate your expectations, your desires, your consciousness into something new. You get to make the decision, am I going to remain frozen? Am I going to remain frozen or am I going to start thawing? Am I going to start moving forward? Much like if you can imagine a frozen river in the dead of winter, even as the winter sun begins to hit it and even as the, the, the temperature around it starts to rise, the water beneath the surface of this frozen river begins to move. And so too, that can be the case for you as you move forward into this next phase of your life, into the solstice season, into the Capricorn season, the beginning of the new year, which is starting this week, really. So when you're making the decision to unthaw, to defrost, to take yourself out of stasis and put yourself back in the game, to take yourself off the sidelines and bring yourself back to life, after days, months, sometimes even years of waiting. Wait and see what happens. We've had a lot of waiting in the last few years, haven't we? We've had a lot of being sent home in the last few years, haven't we? And now the people who are the leaders, who are standing out as leaders, the people who are making decisions about their futures are leaning into this, this decision about, about moving forward about unfreezing themselves, about coming out of stasis in order to fulfill their mission, vision, and purpose for this lifetime. See, this time of reflection is really an opportunity to look back and ask yourself, have I fulfilled the heart's desires that I came here with? Have I fulfilled my missions, my soul missions? Have I fulfilled my soul purpose? And as you reflect back, you might be able to see that there are some cases where you have fulfilled your purpose, but chances are quite good. There's a saying, if you're not dead, you're not done. <laughs> so quite, quite likely, chances are good that there are parts of your mission, vision, and purpose that you have not fulfilled yet. There are, are your heart's desires that are asking to be brought front and center into your life, to be taken off the back burner, to taken out of stasis, out of the freezer and brought to life. And the day of the solstice really marks this opportunity for you to do so if you choose. 
Because here's the other thing. Being in choice means that you're taking responsibility for your creations, for your life. Being in choice says that I'm choosing this and I'm choosing to take full responsibility for the outcomes, to co-create my future, but to know that I am the originator along with God of my decisions. So there's nobody else to blame, in other words. It really is inviting us to all step out of the victim, persecutor, rescuer triad that has been so fundamentally rampant on this planet and to step into a much more evolved and higher frequency paradigm. The creator, the challenger, and the coach is a paradigm that's much more empowering and it's much more appropriate for the time that we're, we're living in. There will still be tendrils of the victim, persecutor, rescuer triad moving forward into the next year to three years for sure. But you know, that triad is one thing that it, once you know about it, you can't unknow it. So when you know that you're running in the victim, persecutor, rescuer triad, you recognize that and you have an opportunity to shift it, to move out of it, to evolve past it, or you also have the opportunity to choose to remain in it as well. But you're no longer unconsciously choosing. In other words, you are in conscious choice about your decision to do so. There's a sense of responsibility that comes during Capricorn season as well. I'm very familiar with that. Um, Capricorn is a, is a leadership season and it's also a profound sense of responsibility for yourself and for other people. And I believe that the best way that you can be fully responsible for others even is to be responsible for yourself, to lead yourself to live out your soul's purpose. And when you do that, everyone around you benefits. And that's one of the reasons that I'm here doing this work. That's one of the reasons that I've been called to this is to help others who are like me in some ways live out their soul's purpose as well. All right, so let me see, is there anything else that they want to want me to tell you? Here's the last thing, is that there can be a seriousness of purpose. There can be a seriousness of responsibility. But the purpose, the responsibility can be done with great joy. It does not have to be arduous. It does not have to be blood, sweat, and tears. In fact, it's not meant to be blood, sweat, and tears. It is meant to be creativity. It is meant to be flow. It is meant to be an effusive joy that transcends what has come before. And that is what is to come if you decide to allow it. This is all about a decision point for all of us. So use the solstice as your decision point. Do I stay where I am? Do I stay in my comfort zone? Do I stay on the gerbil wheel? Do I stay on the fence? Or do I lean into the unknown? Do I lean into the unknown? Do I create the future? Rather than waiting for somebody else to create a version of the future for me, do I just go ahead and create my own? I know that for me and for my clients and for my students, we choose to create our own futures, the ones that we most want to experience. And I hope you do too. That's all I have for now. And I will see you on the next video and we will continue our conversation.